Hello everyone. Today we will see on the topic Ethnobotany, Importance, Scope, Character, Categories and Significance. Ethnobotany is the study of the relationship between plants and human society or culture. The term Ethnobotany was first coined by John W. Hashberger in 1895. If we split the word ethnobotany into two, ethno means ethnic or people and botany means plants. So it's a study of the association of plants with the social and cultural activities of mankind. S.K. Jain is known as the father of Indian ethnobotany and E.K. Janage Amal is the first woman to get a PhD in India from UK for the topic ethnobotany. Coming to the importance and scope, Ethnobotany it provides information regarding the traditional uses of plants wealth which can be utilized in integrated tribal development. As we all know that the tribes living in the forest they know a variety of plants which can be used for the curing of various diseases. The ethnobotanical studies also throws light on certain unknown useful plants and new uses of many known plants which can be exploited for developing new sources for some plant products and agro-based industries. For example, food processing, then fibers and flows, cordage and basketry, etc. Tribal communities, they utilize this ethno-medicinal plants for the treatment of various disease and disorders. Example, diarrhea, dysentery, fever, headache, worm infection, toothache, cough, cold, asthma, leprosy, many types of diseases. And the ethnomedicinal data will also serve as a useful source of information for the chemist, pharmacologist and practitioners of herbal medicines for the detection and isolation of bacteria compounds used in modern medicine. Now as we all know that plants they are a source of many secondary metabolites or many useful drugs. The During the last few decades there were many wonder drugs, example reserpine, quinine, ephedrine, cocaine, colchicine, digitoxin, artemisin, podophyllotaxin, and taxol, etc. They have been discovered from plants with rich ethnobotanical load in tribal societies. The isolation of these alkaloids from plants has arrived a new era in the use of plant products in modern medicine. The tranquilizers or the alkaloids of cinnamine and reserpine have been isolated from the roots of Ravolfia serpentina. Ravolfia is known as, is known as Sarpaganda and it has been in use for many thousands of years in flock medicine for the treatment of snake bite, insanity, epilepsy, fever and high blood pressure. Then Ketranthus roseus, otherwise known as Vinca rosea, yielded two important compounds that is Vinblastin and Vincristin both of which we know are used in the treatment of leukemia or blood cancer. Then there are uh, many number of phytopharmaceuticals which is derived from plants. Some of the examples have been listed here that is atropine, berberine, caffeine, digitoxin, ephedrine. Ephedrine is actually obtained from a gymnosperm ephedra and the ephedrine which is isolated is actually used for asthma. Then morphine it is used as an analgesic that means painkiller and also camphothicin. Camphothicin is an anti-tumor compound. So many of the compounds which have been isolated have been shown many useful properties for uh, humans. Now the recent discoveries are artemisin. It is an anti-malaria drug which is isolated from artemisia. Taxol it is an anti-cancer drug which is obtained from taxes. Hyprosin is an antiviral compound which is isolated from hypericum. Gosipol, it is a male contraceptive which is isolated from gossypium. Echukin, it is an anti-fertility agent which is obtained from Murea paniculata. So all these are the recent discoveries of certain bioactive compounds. Then the primitive societies in India have been dependent on herbal medicines from time immemorial. As we all know that the tribals, they are always dependent on the plants for their various purposes. The knowledge of ethnobotany plays a vital role in the primary health care and economy of the tribals and aboriginal populations of a country and has the potential for the discovery of new herbal drugs and new sources of nutraceuticals. And ethnobotany also provides information to the scientists, planners and administrators for the preparation of action plan for the economic emancipation of tribals and eco-development of tribal areas.
Coming to the categories of ethnobotany, basically there are two categories of ethnobotany that is basic ethnobotany which deals with the compilation and organization of information about the biota obtained from the indigenous and other people such as obtaining data about useful plants and animals, understanding how people manage their environment. Then next is the experimental ethnobotany which includes the basic documentation the quantitative evaluation of use and management and experimental assessment. So basically uh, we target the experimental ethnobotany which focuses on the isolation of active principles from plants used in the treatment of various diseases. Now what is the nature of relationship between plants and mankind? So there are four types positive or negative to either or both of them. So there are four categories relationship useful to both plants and mankind then there is a relationship which is harmful to both plants and mankind then a relationship useful to man but harmful to plants and vice versa next is the significance what is the significance of studying ethnobotany ethnobotanical research can always provide a wealth of information regarding the past and present relationship between plants and traditional societies. As we all know that these tribals they use their plants for various purposes including the cultural uh, ceremonies and all that. So they are always dependent on the plants. Ethnobotany also provides an important tool in the search of new pharmaceuticals or medicines in the development of modern medicine and plant based industries. Now as we all know that uh, one of the major outbreak of ethnobotany was the development of vincristin and vilblastin that is the two anti-cancer drugs and also reserpine which is actually used in hypertension. Patients who are having hypertension are given reserpine and this reserpine is actually isolated from Ravolfia or Sarpagandhi. So all these are the major breakthroughs in ethnobotany. And ethnobotanical research can also be applied to current areas of study such as biodiversity prospecting and vegetation management and it is hoped that in future ethnobotany plays an increasingly role in sustainable development and biodiversity conservation. So studying ethnobotany is very useful for the sustainable development and also for the biodiversity conservation. Thank you.